Alright, alright. Welcome to Big O Blog. Today I am doing what I call my bad eat day. It's Saturday and I am at Popeyes. Yeah. Popeyes chicken. Now I used to be a big Popeyes eating person. I mean I used to eat Popeyes several times a week. But since I'm on my special diabetes management diet, I don't do this often. So maybe once a month once every two weeks or so, I'll come and get me some Popeyes because I love that Cajun chicken. So today I'm gonna to have a little meal, a full meal today, and I'm gonna see how this is gonna work out. Now I know it's bad for me, but what I'm doing different today with this is that I've been fasting all morning. So I've been fasting since around nine o'clock. So it's been at least how much hours since I've eaten. So my blood sugar has to be really low. So I wanna eat this at the lowest point in my fasting to really see how big a spike this food is get. So people can understand, and I can understand that if you're gonna eat something really bad, I wanna show, eat it when you're at the lowest point, right? So your body can deal with the spike. You don't wanna eat this kind of food when you already had a good meal and your sugar is already up a little bit. So I, I made sure I prepare my body and prepare myself to eat this meal. Uh, it may be bad in other ways with the, with the, with the um, cholesterol and so on, but I'm not doing this often, you know, once a month or so. So today I wanted to uh, see how it's going to work out. So what I did, I just took my, um, my blood sugar. So I'm at 85. 85. And I'm, at, I'm outside the Popeye store. It's a nice little Popeye store in here. And I'm at 85. I carry my equipment in this little bag. You can take it everywhere you're going. I have all my equipment here for measuring my blood sugar. So I'm at 85. So I'm starting really low and gonna eat this. So now I would get a good idea from scratch how bad this is. And it may not be as bad as we think, but you wouldn't know unless you try and test. So I hope this is gonna help you, is it gonna help me. So I'm gonna enjoy, I have a, a biscuit, some french fries, a piece of chicken, and some red bean and rice. Red bean and rice, Cajun red bean and rice. You know, I love this stuff. And um, red bean and rice. And some water because I don't drink, I don't try to avoid the sodas, so I drink some water. So, smells good, should taste good. So, I'll be back in about an hour and a half. And wherever I am at during this day, I'm going to stop and take my blood sugar to make sure I give you accurate measurement. All right, so let's see what it's going to do. Popeyes, two piece breast and thigh with some biscuit and fries and some red bean and rice. And starting at 85, if so, we're going to. Let's see, we're going to end up in an hour and a half. All right? Thank you. I'll see you in a minute. All right. Well, I want to thank you for staying around for an hour and a half to see my results. That was a nice meal. Bad Saturday. Bad meal. I know it's going to be a bad meal. A tasty meal. I love the food. You know that? But, you know, my purpose there was to see how much that affects blood sugar. So, you know, I started really low. I started at 84. And I, um, it's been, I have since made it home and had decided I was going to eat something else because I was still hungry after that meal. Because that meal was, it was tasty but not very fulling. Not the ideal meal for fasting then, I would say. Because usually when I try to eat, I try to eat food that helps me to fast and sustain my blood sugar low for a long period of time. But I was hungry after all that after that meal. So we passed by Sam's Club and my wife bought this chicken. So this is a good chicken. It tastes really good. So I said, when I go home, I'm going to have some more chicken. At least this root, this root is chicken is not as, doesn't affect me as much when I take off the skin and so on, right? Because I have that. But before I eat a second time, I always check my blood sugar. And the message you get, always check your blood sugar before you eat. Okay. So the first thing I did was check my blood sugar. It was an hour and a half exact. And I'm about to eat in a little bit. So I say, boom. So I checked my blood sugar. Okay. It was, let me, um, let me go. I was, it was 217, 217 after an hour and a half. 217 after an hour. And I told my wife, I said, you know what? It's going to be high when I measure it. I can feel it tingling in my fingers. I can feel it tingling in my body. Whenever my blood sugar gets like that high, I can actually feel it. In the past, I used to feel that every day. When I was out of control, but I didn't know what it was. 
But now that I have my blood sugar under control, I could tell the difference between 100 and 200. The body feels differently. The eyes feel differently. Everything, the toes, the fingertips, the jaw, everything feels different. I felt my old way at 270. And you know my target is to eat something and come back under 140. But as you know, I know this was a bad meal. I mean, it's a good meal and fast tasty, but fast blood sugar. If you don't know blood sugar, beautiful meal. Well, you know, one of the best. But with blood sugar, you have to watch it. How do you eat that? So I felt so bad at 217. I know I couldn't eat again because I cannot eat anything and I will not eat anything until my blood sugar comes back under 140 or 120 or so. So I know I couldn't eat. I felt it. The test proved it, right? So I said, okay, let me wait a little longer and test again. So I did it, I, I, I did it again. I test one more time two hours after, okay? I'm at 187, 187, 187. I still can't eat two hours after. I'm still feeling tingly. I'm still feeling tingly in my body. I'm still feeling all the effects of the sugar. So I waited three hours. So three hours after, I tested again. I'm finally under 140. So it took three hours after eating that meal to get me back under 140. Three hours. So I'm back now. So I couldn't eat anything until I get under 140. Right? I'm still hungry. Right? So now the lesson I learned here is that you have to test your blood sugar. You, before you eat, you have to know where you are. You can't continue to eat. If I had eaten this chicken when I came home at 217, I could have jumped to 50, to 60, to maybe 300. Right? So I drank a cup of coffee because coffee also helped bring the blood sugar down. I think the reason I came back down in three hours to 134, to 134 is because I drink, I drink two cups of coffee. Because I tested, I know coffee helped bring my sugar back down quickly too. So I had to work really hard to get it back down in three hours. But the, the, sa the safety of testing and knowing exactly what I eat and where my sugar is at protects me from spiking my sugar to coma level or to total cloudiness and eyes level. That's why it's so critical to know what you eat and how to behave after you eat that food. So I know it wasn't a good meal for me as far as blood sugar is concerned, but I made sure I started very low to eat it because I know it's going to go very high. And then I proved that it goes very, it didn't go very high. But then I tested again and then I know I cannot eat again. And I have to monitor that sugar until it gets back to a level of sustenance. So now I will not eat again for the night because I want this to go back to around 100 and let my body start to function normal again. Give my kidney and my pancreas a rest and let them function again normal. So I may have maybe something, something really small, a piece of apple or something for the rest of the evening. You see? So the lesson here is be, be very, very careful. Pay attention to your blood sugar and you can live good and you can eat good. That's not going to kill me. Because I spike high one time. It's not good to spike high like that often. But I do it once in a while and I did it. But I did it in a, in a, in a, in a controlled way. It's not good, but in a controlled way. I still get to eat the chicken. I enjoyed it. But I'm able to take my time now and I give my body about five, six, seven, eight, nine hours to get back under control. And maybe on tomorrow, go back to eating my regular food again. But you see what happens if you don't know? You can kill yourself. So if diabetes become a dead sentence, it's usually because of lack of understanding, lack of knowledge. I saw a family member die from diabetes. I didn't understand what, I didn't understand why. But now I'm with my knowledge, I see exactly what happened to them. They never knew exactly where the blood sugar was. And they would eat these food that are high in carbohydrates, high in sugar, within an hour, hour and a half after eating previous kinds of food because they're feeling hungry. And then eventually they end up in a coma. So they're sustaining 400, 3, 400 high levels of blood sugar just because you're hungry. So they show the importance of eating food high in fiber, eating food that gonna sustain your food low in, in carbs, food, food well-balanced food well-balanced meal that will keep your blood sugar right. And when you do get out of, out of control, know it and pull back. This is a very important lesson. Very important lesson to learn.
That if I didn't know what I know, I could kill myself by overeating the wrong food at the wrong time. But my experiments of eating this combination and understanding different combinations of food is helping me to manage my blood sugar, manage my life, manage protecting myself from going to a coma, from having diabetic neuropathy, from blindness, from different things like that. It is very critical for us as diabetics, like type 2 in particular I'm speaking about, I don't know much about type 1, to understand where we are, what we eat, and why. And it's, it's tough not to eat things like that. I love it. And I'm going to eat it again, you know? But not now, not in a hurry. Can't take another spike like that within the next 30 days or so. You see? But the knowledge I gain from that helps me to manage other things also. Know your blood sugar, know how high you are, and then at that stage, can you eat or not? And if you eat, what should you eat so you don't go higher? Right? So as you see, you see there, I went from 85 to 217, 187 to 134. What a lesson. I'm feeling good now again. Um, the, the, the tingling is going away, my body, because I know how I feel now. I know exactly my sugar is high. It's going away. I'm starting to feel good again. I want a cup of coffee, some water, relax myself, and chill. Keep my mind easy, keep my pressure down, and relax. I'm going to be chicken again for the night. You see? So this was a blessing for me. I like doing these experiments because it teaches me a lot about my body and about my health. And I hope that when I share these type of things, you get a message from each one. I try to target a specific message. And in this case, particularly, the message is, Know if you're going to eat a bad meal. Eat you're going to eat a meal that's going to spike you. Be prepared to eat it. Know you can't eat in a, in a short, after that for a while. Be able to sustain without eating. Taste your blood sugar. Make sure it goes back down. And then, then give your body a rest. Four, five, six, eight, maybe nine hours. As long as you can give it a rest. So you're still under control. And then go back to normal. Eating your good food again. Right? So every now and then you must want to do that. But yeah. don't depend on your medicine to do that. Because I take medicine too. It doesn't, it doesn't stop that from happening. It doesn't stop. And my medicine, my medicine is reduced though. I take very low dosage now. I don't want to stop because I know I can't heal my kidney or my pancreas. So I'm controlling the blood sugar instead of trying to heal it and get medicine. Obviously medicine is, is, is not, it makes no sense. So I use my eating. All right. So thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. If you like what I'm doing, subscribe. Ring the bell so that you can get notification when I put these new videos out. If it's an opportunity I get, I will do it. You know, share the videos and learn from it. And like I say, you don't have to be diabetic to understand this. This is, if I understood this before, before I was diabetic, I wouldn't be diabetic. My wife follow everything I'm doing and she's not diabetic because she don't want to get diabetic. You see, she want to be sitting here taking videos of me like this and smiling behind the camera and saying, yeah, baby, you're doing it, you're doing it, you know? <laughs> so I want to see something happen to you and your family and be able to live long for our families. My beautiful children and grandkids to come, you know? I want to be able to hear. I'm trying my best. So if I go, it's not because of my fault. <laughs> because it's happened. Because I'm going to try to protect myself, right? So I'm doing it for me. I do it for you. Hope you learn a lot. If you enjoy again, subscribe, all right? Love you. Blessing. Come on back again and see what, I have to do, what I'm doing next, okay? Bye. <laughs>